I'm Nigel Douglas. I'm CEO and founder of Global Surface Intelligence Limited, or GSI. GSI provides big data analytics and processing on satellite and remote sensing imagery. We have developed an extremely powerful software platform, which sits on the UK's largest supercomputer. And using this platform, we're going to be able to bring out some very new, exciting and novel data sets by processing huge volumes of data. I'm Dr. Matt Tybersky. The product that we developed at GSI, our initial product, is based on annual information. In order to get to that point, we've had to develop a unique and novel approach to certain machine learning algorithms that are scalable and robust so that we can process very large volumes of data. And so, for example, the initial source code that we developed processed roughly three and a half million data points. If we were to do this on a standard computer with the standard software, it would probably require about 200 gigabytes of RAM, and it would take about a year to process. Currently, the software we've now re-engineered allows us to process the same information, probably over a couple hours. Our initial product at GSI um, was conceived of as a way at getting around biomass estimates when you don't have field data. So for example, if you're an investment fund or an investor or someone who's buying an asset or a concession, there's a lot of upfront costs involved in the due diligence of that acquisition. From our point of view, we're trying to reduce the cost and also assist and facilitate investors in this space. So our initial product was conceived of as a way of getting at the data when you don't have field estimates. So we're hoping that we can reduce their due diligence costs in that process. If they do have ground data, if our information is not accurate enough to their ground data, we just retrain our models very quickly, and then we can provide updated information with increased accuracy against ground data. So what we've actually developed isn't a perfect number or the best number from now until the end of time. We've actually developed a number that we can always update very quickly and inexpensively, and hopefully reduce clients' costs when they're actually collecting or trying to understand the value of biomass within potential assets that they may buy. I'm Paul Atkinson, a partner in uh, private equity business, Part Equity, and we invest in uh, many different asset classes, including forestry. The potential of GSI's technology is to allow us to really highlight uh, the best areas of forestry to acquire, I mean, essentially where the trees grow fastest, based on legacy information. But then having acquired that uh, provides with valuable information in terms of management of the asset, uh, but also future movements of uh, timber pricing uh, for the asset as well, maybe even create an index for that and allow us to unitize the product. So as a research scientist, I find the product that Global Surface Intelligence has produced uh, very exciting. It's the first time, as far as I'm aware, that uh, a map of above ground carbon for the whole world has been produced annually. Uh, they have the capacity to do this annually from 2000s to present, whereas other mapping efforts I've been involved with have only produced maps for one time only. Um, and the most interesting thing in terms of tropical forests is the differences. We don't really care as much about what the biomass is at one point in time. We want to know about change, deforestation and regrowth. Every time you acquire a forest, in the UK anyway, the reg book valuation derived, which essentially involves sending a land surveyor out and a land rover and a tape measure and various other bits of kit, uh, physically being on site. And even then, they're really only estimating the amount of timber in a particular area. You know, if you go into a forest where there's maybe three, four hundred thousand trees, it can only ever be an estimate. And that's an expensive process. Uh, you know, with, with this kind of technology, we no longer have to go on site to do that. Um, we can do it uh, as frequently as we want and at very low cost. Uh, and therefore, providing valuable information to our investors becomes an awful lot easier. Historically, forestry funds have really valued forestry on a very infrequent basis and then relied on pointing at pointing as an index of what might be happening with it as, as opposed to what is actually happening with it. People often think that in order to see deforestation within a forest you need a pixel size at the same scale as uh, the deforestation is occurring. That's not necessarily the case. You can actually see changes in forests at a coarse resolution through a change in greenness that relates to the loss of biomass.
our first data platform we've brought out, we're calling GSI Carbon. That provides global and annual above ground biomass data. And this is the first time in the field of science this has been achieved. We're now looking to work with partners and universities to help bring out new and exciting data layers and find novel solutions to business problems. GSI is uh, unique in the way it's processing uh, global data sets on forests in a continual way, combining MODIS uh, satellite imagery with topography and climate data. We think the GSI data is going to be relevant to a wide number of clients uh, from public sector through to private sector. In the public sector, governments are required under the Kyoto Protocol, or those governments that are signatories to the Kyoto Protocol, to report uh, changes to forests uh, and emissions associated with land use change. And GSI uh, approach represents an efficient way of fulfilling this requirement. Um, beyond governments, there are also uh, international organizations such as the World Bank, GEF, uh, the UN, and also investors in forests and land use. So th there is a wide range of potential clients. We're very excited about working with GSI on using this kind of technology to really improve the way we invest in and look after forestry assets on behalf of our investors. And when we're competing with others to, for land to buy it, we can be more aggressive for sites where we know that it's a better planting place and therefore the timber will grow faster. And the ones where, where, which are maybe not so good, um, uh, we're not going to lose value by acquiring something that's maybe below par in terms of performance, you know, investment performance and investment return. And we're very excited about working with these guys. Our software was actually developed to ingest any satellite imagery, so we're not confined to using the, the, the current database, which is based on MODIS imagery, but we use MODIS imagery mainly to reduce costs for clients. The added value of the GSI platform is that we are taking our high-performance software and we're putting on a very, very high-performance computer, and this will allow clients who have databases already to actually upload their databases onto the system and process the information over a high-performance computer. It can speed up processing compared to standardized softwares. Processing that would take a year would actually take just a few hours now. Whilst we've produced our first data layer which relates to biomass, we know that our platform can be applied to almost any market sector where there's a requirement to process large volumes of satellite data and compare that against existing data sets. So what we can do is train our system to understand previous and historical data sets and then make predictions moving forward. And this can apply to any market sector. It could be security and defense, it could be other environmental data services. We're really excited about where we are at the moment and we're looking to try and use our platform in many different areas.